Hey, it's Don. Um, I had no intent on coming on today, but I've been in conversations. A bunch of people have been sending me screenshots. I read quite a few articles on e-commerce bytes. I investigated from message boards and things like that. And there's some issues that I think honestly and sincerely are of urgency to any person selling on the platform basically if you're aware of all the item specifics going on what ebay has been doing as well and now i've got confirmation i've seen a few in my store so i can confirm this is true whether they say it is not is or not but they are moving your items from one category to another now i know that sounds perfectly fine which should be okay but the problem is the fees are different in different categories so you are unwittingly possibly paying more for an item in another category now because of them switching it if your prices are determined by the amount of percentage of fees you have to pay that could affect you that's not the only aspect of them moving the categories it makes in fact let's just let's hop over and let me just show you an article that will explain it real easily here hang on just a second let me flip down to a screen display and we will go from there so I'm on e-commerce bytes right now. We'll show you the article. I would honestly recommend every single person who sells on eBay read this article on e-commerce bytes. Now, before we go farther, I do write some articles for this. This is nothing to do with anything I do with them. This is from my own accord. No one's telling me to say anything about this. I read this because this is a, a bothersome thing Again, I would almost always say eBay is in the legal just to do what they want, but there are some rules on them intentionally charging you more without telling you ahead of time that that's happening. Now, it goes on to actually affect people that are following certain searches or watching certain items. Those won't be relevant anymore if your item isn't in that category anymore. So you are losing potential sales at the very same time this is going on. Now I've read through here and I'm not gonna go over the entire aspect of it here, but it, it goes into the fact of details and how they're changing things and check boxes. All of this are, are against what most every buyer out there is going to be looking for. I get people confused on what's going on now. The, the biggest thing though, as I said, is if they move your items to a category that costs more, it's going to cost you money. If you have added fees or are using, say, a the, the gallery view, in some categories, those extra fees cost. In some categories, they don't. And a lot of the collectibles, a lot of those extra add-ons, like gallery view, is included. It may not be included in other categories, as I said. So you could automatically, the minute they change something over to another category, be hit with whatever category that they're in, the fee structure for that category. So you need to check like all of your listings to see which category they are in. Now, I know... A lot of people are having tons and tons of trouble with with the in fact let me pop myself back in here for just a second here because there's a lot going on as I said with this so in in a, a lot of the aspects of the item specifics I get a lot of blowback from people telling me that this this is due because of Google now I'm going to show you in just a minute here from eBay's own data on your items that that is not the case. These item specifics seem to be tied to eBay specifically alone. On uh, none of the documents that eBay supplies for any of this, does it say, does it have any effect on that? They do say supposedly it'll help you on the outside, but they don't mention what. They don't mention Google. Um, if, if you're unaware, if you do Shopify, you've got better representation on Google with none, none, zero of the item specifics at all being used because you create your own listings. You don't have to put item specifics in there and they show up across the platform billions of times. So it's a huge factor with having Google searches, but that is not the case. eBay has what's called, and if you go to your store right now to your hub and go to the performance tab, you can download your own personal the listings quality report and uh, the quality report shows you listings that will not show up 
in Google that do not show up in Google Shopping. Now, eBay just has listings that show up in Google Shopping. Shopify has them on all Google connections, including YouTube, Google itself, and Google Shopping. So again, I don't see any whatsoever link between what eBay is trying to do with these crazy, and I do mean crazy, item specifics. On top of that, the item specifics that were stated that were going to be the ones that they were changing or that we had to address aren't all the ones they're doing. There's items that are on that list or that are, are not on that list that I am being forced to add on to. Not only that, they are changing condition lines on items. So now I'm getting comments on why does your item state that it says it's new? It wasn't listed that way. Neither were the thousand plus items that I listed in that same category that all say like new now instead of the category condition it used to say. So again, this isn't just one little aspect. You've got to do a little extra work and it's costing you money. It's costing you money in many different ways. There's, there's examples. Let, let's, let's go back. We're going to look at a few more examples. I'm going to show you the listing quality report right now and show you without a doubt that the item specifics they're asking for aren't stopping your items from showing up on Google in any way at all. None of the ones that show up, and I've only got nine that show up on my specific report that say they are not showing up on shopping. Nine, nine listings. And the, of the nine, the reasons they are not showing up have nothing whatsoever to do with item specifics because they're unrelated in any way, shape, or form to the items that are, are, are stated. Let, let's hop over and look at a few more things. I hate to be bopping around here. As I said, this was not an intended live show, but man, every time I read, I find something other going on with this. This is affecting pretty much everything in our store right now in so many different ways that it's, it's again, it, it's, it's coming down to the point of whether it's going to be economically viable for me to list cheaper items at all with all this going on on eBay anymore. I would have never said that a few years ago or even a month or two ago until all of this madness with the item specifics comes out. This this is not meant to be a rant, but it, I don't know how else to put this. This is major, major, major. When you are being forced to pay a different fee than what you signed up for, that should not be right. It shouldn't even be legal for them to do that because you had no warning that your item was going to be moved to a different category. Again, if if you've got friends who don't know this, I would honestly share this information with them as soon as possible to make sure that you are aware of that. So if you are setting your prices based on selling fees in specific categories, that you can adjust those now before you lose money if they're in a higher category. You can also remove any of those extra add-ons that may now affect your listing again, like gallery view may not be free in every single category. If you use gallery view from listings and collectibles, and all of a sudden your item somewhere else, again, you may have a different fee set up for that. This is our money now. This is serious in my book. And they don't seem to have a clue at all on what they are doing. Terms in, in records, terms in just everything all over the place. They are categorizing and making assumptions that they have no clue on. Again, I don't think this is my opinion, but but at this point, I, I have no other way to take it. Records using the term PVC for styrene, um, case style for a record, inlay uh, for a inner sleeve. I know inlay has been used in the past for, for corporate business-wise for, for inner sleeves, but no one in their right mind knows what inner or inlay is. It's like that in every category that people keep showing me listings of. I constantly have people sending me or calling me or texting me or sending me stuff about what's going on. As more and more people read some of these articles, not just on e-commerce bites, so they're all over. There's people, Reddit boards are, are you know flying with item-specific issues left and right. There's been uh, some conversations with some of the webinars that eBay puts out and question and answer boards where, you know, it's obvious that, that the people that are answering questions and saying what's going on don't have a clue. Anybody who's, who sells, sells adult material knows um, in mass quantity, eBay has physically stated in writing to people that those items would still be allowed. You can see that information on even on posts from... 
Marnie Levin or whatever her name was who worked at eBay, she quoted in some of these, and you can see it literally, it's highlighted in many of the posts, again, here on e-commerce bites, stating that those items would still be allowed. That's not the truth. People have bought hundreds of dollars worth of these thinking that they'd be allowed again back on the platform, and now they are stuck with them. I've had people sending me notices who sell adult material who are out of business and all of their money is invested in something. I know people say, well, they should have known it. They've been selling on the platform for 25 years. Who would have thought that eBay would cut down a multi-million dollar part of the company? None of these moves make me comfortable. Let's let's hop over before I, I don't want to be ranting. That's not my honest intention. But man, this is like the worst one I've ever seen going on. It's covering and hitting so many different aspects of the platform all at once. Not to mention the fact that that um, they've had glitches where sales, the minute they were made, were immediately canceled by some automatic thing in the system where tons of people were losing money over that. One person lost 250 bucks alone. And then as soon as they fix that, the next thing happens, people can't list. I've had this happen. So let, let's hop over again. Let's show you. Let's show you a little more of this Again, you're going to have to look through, and I would honestly recommend that you read this entire article here, as I said, because it goes into many different details. S click on some of the eBay board conversations because you'll be kind of surprised at some of the responses that I see coming from eBay about what's going on. Um, here's a good example. If you listed anything in a category that included free Gallery Plus and those listings were moved into a different category that doesn't offer Gallery Plus, each of those listings will result in a dollar listing upgrade fee. That's for everybody who is in collectibles. If your item was moved, you might be billed a dollar without your knowledge instantly the minute they switch categories. Again, none of this was planned out ahead of time in any good uh, conversation. They don't have a clue, in my opinion. This is totally crazy that it's affecting your buyers. All of their saved searches, if they move an item on it, it affects the conditions. So now you're going to have to change conditions and all of these things. Many of the item specifics that are required, you can't even fill out because they don't apply to your item. Or you put them in and they're gone the next minute. So again, there's there's nothing happy about this one at all. The only thing I can say is they did it before fourth quarter. I, I, I honestly, at this point, if I ever had to say eBay was going to go by the way of MySpace, it's things like this compounded in a row. They gave people assurances on adult items. They invested money. I have invested money in vintage pinup style magazines that I cannot sell on the platform. I was told as well. I've been shared copies of emails and even copies of screenshots from posts from active discussions where eBay said that they would be allowed to be sold still. So people invested thinking that. I can't blame somebody for trusting the judgment and the comments and words that were printed from a site that says, hey, this is what's going to happen. I invest and spend my time and my money based on what I expect to happen on the site that I am selling on. If that's not the case, well, then who can you trust? Uh, eBay doesn't want to lose this. One of these comments on there, one from one of their boards was like, please don't be discouraged with us and leave the platform. They're telling people not to, but every action that they're doing seems to keep making it worse, not only for us, but for buyers. Anybody who sells on the site knows or searches even for an item. My searches for collectibles are, are screwy. I never know what's going to show up on them. I get recommendations for shoes, purses, and watches. Not a single one of those items have I ever looked for. It'll say, you looked at this item, we think you might be interested in this, and it's for a pair of $500 tennis shoes. I don't care if somebody wants to spend that. I have never in my life sold, looked at, or bought a single shoe off of eBay. Well, I'll tell you, I've sold one pair of vintage shoes that were lime green vintage. The only time ever, and that's been like four years ago. I don't want to say I haven't when I have. So, But the, the point of it is, it's it's totally discouraging people from every single aspect of the platform. If they wanted to be in a downward spir a spiral, that seems to be what this is going. I don't care what the revenue is, is happening now because they got lucky because of the pandemic. They're on the decline. They are number three instead of number two, which they were last year. So again, read over this. You can see the difference in the prices that's going to hit you eBay is going to be inundated with people requesting credit when this happens. Again, you listed it in a specific uh, category based on a specific final value fee. 
they move that item it is no longer under that specific final value fee again you weren't told that was going to happen at all there was no transparency there was no warning that you could be charged for any extra fee whether they take it off or not they i have no trust in them in any way shape or form as i've said that the management is totally clueless the ceo the whole works they just finally got a cfo after almost two years so again who wants to take over for the company is the problem again my opinion on most of this but you can read it in here yourself on what it goes so you could be paying more instantly from this new thing depending on where you're in if you're in comic books they've changed everything around if you're in records they've changed everything around they've eliminated the duration category they've added in a type category a lot of people may not understand these even people who have collected for years and sold for years is not going to know some of the terminology at all it makes no sense they don't match any of the the guides in postage stamps none of it matches any of the collector terminology or guides for those items uh, here's another example. Uh, a reader provided an example of problem sellers face. The Asian antiques subcategory still exists, so there is a place to list an 18th century Quanlong Chinese vase, but if you have an 18th century Meissen vase to list, it goes with the Hummels and collectibles. Now, those are, those are different areas. Those are different everything about it is different people that are looking for asian antiques and watching or watching items aren't going to see your item if even if it is because it's not in the same category that it once was so if they're not going to educate the buyers on what is going on the buyers are going to be missing more and more this goes right back down to me showing some of the search results if i type in the word weeble versus the word weebles one eliminates 20 percent of all items in that category section or or that type of search and the other doesn't and again it depends on where you're searching from as to what happens now let's show you and i think this is it right here this is their announcement introducing the listing quality report as you can see i would like to point out that they're saying one of the biggest improvements you can do is fill in seven recommended item specifics per listing doesn't tell you which one doesn't seem to matter which one they just want you to fill those in that's all it seems like it's doing again another one here add order size discounts to 35 of your listings what if you don't have 35 listings what if you don't have 35 that actually uh, uh, you know count for it i know this is just a hypothetical but the point of it is it, it's arbitrary it means nothing there's no difference in it now i told you that we're going to uh, i want to show you one more thing here this is my listing quality report this is the listing quality report that you get now I, i've had many people make comments again that i said that this is all because of google this is all because of google my items show up in google now and they have for years all of them so the majority of my items i can find in the first two pages at least my collectibles one of a kinds and scarce items now most all of my items in Shopify seem to show up much better than they do from from eBay but the point of it is on this report Google shopping rejections I've got 30,000 items up out of all 30,000 items again I haven't put in item specifics for any of the new ones I have nine single ones you can't tell me this has anything to do with Google shopping or Google anything I, I, I don't buy it at all this is eBay wanting again opinions this is eBay wanting us to provide them information because they think it's going to be useful to the benefit of them so they can make more money off of it and then advertise there they've been talking about pulling advertisers where they can advertise on the platform and again as we see there are some of that sort of thing on there I just see this as another money grab and if you look at the reasons why again eBay's changing sheet music I don't know why they're doing the changes on sheet music but the Google issue is invalid age group now that's not the case because I've got identical sheet music's up that don't say that so what it looks to be and these are items of several of these were items that were in my recommended listing or recommended item specifics I just assume at this point that this is now based on possibly eBay wanting the information in there I'm not sure if eBay is the one who designates specific you know item specifics or Google is demanding them I can't see that Google would demand those because everybody else doesn't have to do that if you've got your own site you don't have item specifics that you have to do and Google still promotes it if you're on Shopify you don't have item specifics that are, are specific to you you just put whatever you want on there and you still have the same visibility as someone on eBay who has a hundred different item specifics that don't relate to the item 
Again, this is all a major issue. The money is the biggest one in my book. Anytime someone charges me for something that I didn't authorize, I didn't acknowledge, I didn't know about, they didn't tell me about it, it is a problem for me. If I pay for something and I get something different, that's a problem for me. If I'm paying for something and I'm not getting what I'm saying, like uh, the, the, the opportunity to have my items watched or followed or someone to save a specific search in a specific category, that isn't going to be relevant for a long time. And who's going to know? They're not educating the buyers on what is going on at all. If someone can point to a buyer that was explained how any of this works, I would be extremely happy to see that. Again, this is my actual report. Even some of the information on here is irrelevant on what it says. I don't care, the click, click through rate and all that means nothing to me at all. So I could care less what that says. Some of these give you rankings and says you're ranked this one. Let me, in fact, maybe this is one of them. It ranks me like at three out of the category and says there's such as many people selling in that category. These numbers can't be right. There's just no, no, no way. Even the breakdowns on here just, just Again, eBay's going to supposedly help us, but a lot of their recommendations, in fact, let's see if we can go. A lot of the recommendations on this report um, are like adding item specifics. Like this one here, I'm ranked number three out of 3,799 in this category. I guess that's possible because we do have a lot in that category. On average, listings with the most sales in this category have 30% of their brands filled out. There is no brand, there's no brand for, for cards. It makes no sense. So these are just made up numbers. These are just 30% is a luck. I could flip a coin and get 50%. So that 30% is just a joke. They have no clue. They're giving us information that's meaningless. Like when they recommend you, in fact, we can read through here. We can read through here. Uh, records, I'm ranked 957 out of 86,000 sellers. Yeah, that's what it says. I, I don't believe any of these numbers, honestly. Um, fill in at least eight recommended item specifics. What are they just coming up with a number? Why is it eight? Why isn't it five? Why isn't it 12? Again, this makes no sense. This is, this is not helpful. It's not changing our search results off platform. You know, you can see it on, on the report that eBay is supplying you. You've got access to the same report I'm looking at here. It was generated today. I just generated before this. You can see all the information. It's a live shot. This isn't some made up form that I've altered or edited. Um, Add free shipping to my listings. On average, 40% of listings with the most viewed uh, listing clicks in this category offer free shipping. That doesn't mean they're selling it. More than half are selling it without free shipping. This is kind of misleading because if you're not, not thinking, oh wow, 48%, I'm gonna get a big increase by adding free shipping. This information is, is, is misleading at best in my opinion. Here's another one that, that Add free shipping again, same amount. On average, 100% of listings with the most sales in this category offer free shipping. Now, labels are mostly one of a kind. So that, again, that whole statement doesn't make sense. That would mean everybody selling a, a label in that category has free shipping. And I sell labels in that category all the time. You see them every single week I do I do um, a what's sold on uh, eBay video. And I'm ranked number seven out of a thousand people in that category, category, but it's telling me I'm not included in the 100%. Again, this is skewed. There's no way this information is, is meaningful to me, whether it's being improved or not. They're rolling out something, giving people information that in my opinion could hurt their business again these are my opinions but you read into this what you want look at your own reports see where you rank how can i be out of the group of a hundred percent of listings even though i'm in the top you know couple percentage points at being number seven in the entire category it makes no sense it's impossible the math doesn't figure out i would love to see their explanation on the math on this where are these figures coming from now you can click on here on the individual recommendations Again, here it goes another one. Make sure there are at least 14 keywords in your title. 14 different words you have to have in your title that are keywords. The word the is a keyword. Any word in the title is a keyword technically. You can sell an item with four words in, in the title. It means nothing. These are irrelevant, totally useless, just guesstimates. Uh, add sales markdown to 367. They're telling me I need to mark down my items. On average, 50% of listings with the most sales in this category offer sales even at markdown. So it's a toss of a coin. There's, there's, that's, that's not statistics. That's a flip of a coin. I may or may not get something out of it. 
Why do we recommend this? It's, it's meaningless again. And again, I'm, this is vintage antiques listings condition unknown. I'm number 54 in that category out of almost 10,000. I know there's more than 10,000 people that have left categories. Now the condition states unknown because eBay's removed conditions on a bunch of our items and put them like new or all types of different things or has added conditions that weren't there before forcing people to add them in. So again, this is just a total nightmare. I've got 30,000 listings and I'm not sure if I sell something, what's gonna happen because I don't know if the listing had something changed like the condition line or it might state that my item is something else now that it is not. Who's gonna get blamed for that? Does eBay stand by what they do? We all know that's not the case. Now let's look at just one more uh, thing here because this is important, I think. Now, this is from one of those general topics. I don't know who this person is. I will never go to one of eBay's live Zooms or chats or anything because the information they give out changes 20 minutes after the road. The last, like a month ago, somebody I personally talked to was told in words and writing on one of these boards that yeah, you'll be fine on selling adult material and blah, blah, blah. Not true, totally not true. Again, people said it's because of the payment processor. Totally not true because people on these posts are telling you right off the bat that they've been selling adult material on managed payments. Don't buy the story that they can't get it on managed payments because you can sell it. They have been able to do that. You can sell it right now up to June 6th, uh, June 15th, right this second. So it's not managed payments. It has nothing to do with that. eBay has made the decision above and beyond that. Again, people running a company have no faith whatsoever, whatsoever. So you can read this here. This person's basically complaining, wanting some explanation about it. One of the things, uh, let's see where it says it on here. They wanted an explanation in um, basic, ah, oh, geez, where is it? Uh, again, I would recommend everybody reading some of these here. Uh, hang on just a second. Um, they wanted it not in um, business speech. Basically, they wanted them to be honest and, and just uh, straightforward and not give them a marketing PR statement. And the answer to this from this Brittany person here, everything in here, this is the response. You can freeze frame or whatever and read it yourself, but it's all business. It's, it's all uh, propaganda, basically, from eBay, basically. It's, it's all um, like a, a propaganda statement. It, it's all corporate speak. It's all double talk and, and stuff, in my opinion. This, it, it doesn't answer any of these people's questions. And that's page after page of this. Or they don't know who, they'll send it to the right person or they'll address it later. These are the people who are supposed to be answering the questions on this stuff. This is greatly affecting people. Just like a few years ago when they did that to the clothing area and everybody in clothing was suffering for a very long time. This area is far, far much as, as big as that plus because the, the media section, the entire media category, every other category is hit now. Your money is the biggest thing though. Let me, let me go back over here. I'm sorry to be bouncing around, but. So hopefully everybody is paying attention because this is extremely, extremely important in, in my opinion. The pricing. I don't think it's legal for them to charge us more without telling us. Again, my opinion, I can't see that legal as a company. If you walked into Walmart and everything on the shelf says it was $10, but you get up to the counter, well, we moved the category and that's now an extra $2. That would be against the law. Uh, again, I can't see that, that not being an issue. I, I don't, I'm not going to address it with eBay because eBay does what they want. People say, complain. eBay does whatever they want. I've learned from 25 years of dealing with eBay, they don't listen to us at all. You know, they're telling people, don't worry, don't panic. You don't have to leave the platform. But every step they do lately is hurting us. It's hurting our buyers. This totally kills buyers that were, were searching for specific items and had safe searches of items because those items may not be in that category anymore. They may be looking for specific conditions or anything like that, all gone. Just like the record category. It, 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 now, it's not mandatory yet, but I can almost guarantee you, you're going to have to go in and add the condition to every single record that you have up or anything like that because they have moved some of those, those spots. Just like uh, for the duration on the records. I can't, the duration box you can't use. You'd have to type something in. And I don't even know if it will let you do that. All of my listings were under the, the item specific duration. They've now entered in a new one called type and it's not auto populating. 
So the only way I would have to go through and examine every listing title by title or something or even pull them all out, thousands of them, one by one to figure out what's the new type going to be. Some of the types, as I said, make no sense. Anybody out there who collects records, you know it's called styrene. All the price guides call it styrene. They don't call it PVC. I've n I even had to double check to make sure it's technically the same thing because I've never heard anybody in the record industry say PVC. All Again, like condition-wise or catalog number for stamps. They're not even using Scott's. They're not even using the most search comment, the most search thing in the whole category. Not one of these, these things would have happened if they would have asked the people who sell the most items in any of these categories. It would have been an easy, quick fix to ask us instead of hurting us and hurting the buyers who can't find your items. Uh, I, going into searches as well, try and find something you were looking for before easily. I get shoes, watches, and purses and stuff I don't even look for. I get suggestions for those all the time now. Why? Because they're getting a ton of money. They've instigated services for them. An executive at eBay, him and his son run a shoe business. Is that not a conflict of interest? He's on the board, or, or if I'm not mistaken, or a high-ranking exec. Again, these are, these are factual. I've seen it posted on their pages. You, you can't tell me that some of this stuff doesn't happen like this. I'm not blind. I just want the site to be better. I don't hold anything against the customer service reps giving us bad information ever because it's because of the people above them giving them the bad information to give us. Just like Paper Goy, Mr. Magazine. I'm going to bring those two up. Good guys. Talk to them. Very good. I'm trying to set up something to talk to them now with. They were told in writing, in writing, multiple times just a couple weeks before that magazines, adult stuff was fine going forward. That Marnie Levin or whatever her name is has stated that. I've been played those clips to me personally by someone as well who cut and tagged the timestamp on them. That was said as well. Recently, this year, again, I've got probably $1,000 tied up in adult magazines 1970s and before and some films and stuff like that it's cutting off a whole industry uh, on things that they promised that would be still there it's not the point that they're getting rid of them it's the promises the lies the the the, the misleading aspects of all of this the item specifics don't have anything to do with Google showing up on shopping because only nine of my 30,000 listings are on there and none of them have anything related to the item specifics that are tied to those items unless eBay added in age related uh, age breakdown for sheet music from 1910. It makes no freaking sense. People are sending me clothing and teddy bears listed in screwball categories now, different fees, different structures gallery view charges an extra dollar and all this other stuff you're going to have to check every invoice going forward to make sure that they're not moving your items you might even have had it happen and not even known it with the clothing maybe that happened in clothing i don't know i don't sell clothing so i, I don't trust any aspect of my business with with ebay at this point you can't trust your money because again you were promised that you listed in this category it was that fee they just moved it on you so now you're you're stuck with a different category check your percentages make sure you're charging correctly just like i've had now three times where ebay has changed my shipping and gave them a priority which i don't offer on anything and so now i didn't even have a box i had to drive down to the post office to satisfy ebay through i don't keep shipping boxes for for priority because i don't ship that way the only ones i keep are the flat rate ones so uh, that's it's just crazy so i i had to spend time on the phone dealing with that and so you're losing time every time they do one of these changes ever now here's another thing that i've done everybody says ebay's you know this that they might be getting better I spent the last 38 days, again, you guys know that I keep track of everything. I've got a sheet where I mark down everything on. The point of that is that, um, hang on one second here. I got a warning going off here. The point of that is that I tracked every day we were listing. I wanted to know how many days I had issues, how many days had an error where something didn't work. Every day for the last 38 days, I had at least one, if not more than that, errors where, sorry, it's not us. We couldn't list. The, the item wouldn't list. We had to reload the page. I had to retype or copy. I had to re-upload the photos. Um, this happens all the time. I'll load my multiple um, 
uh, printing for uh, shipping labels. I do bulk shipping. And there'll be a whole bunch that say retry, 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 retry. You can't do anything with it. Even if you hit retry, it still doesn't work. Some of those won't list or won't do it for some stupid reasons, dollar amounts, and all types of things that eBay already has the information for. It, it, it's it's gotten to be totally, totally out of control where, again, it's it's coming down to the viability of me listing cheaper items if I'm going to have to go through this kind of pain for listing those. I would rather take 10% less on another platform where I don't have to deal with any of this. You know, it, it's again, this is going to hurt eBay extremely bad. Maybe they'll never admit it because they never seem to. They, they won't give you any compensation because, again, it's your problem. You agree to the user agreement, as we all have to, to sell. Again, as I said, my revenue keeps going down on eBay. Not money coming in, but the percentage of my overall revenue. It's below the halfway mark and steadily dropping down. So now adult material is now limited off my platform. So I'm going somewhere else. If you, if you want to know another site to sell adult material, go to... Uh, E-commerce bites. Look up the adult items are now banned. And in the comments section, there's a gentleman. I'm assuming gentleman who started his own adults-only platform, and he's going to allow anybody to. I don't know what he's got worked out, but apparently he he knows what he's doing. The site's already up. You can already register it. Don't know if it's any good, but he's apparently going to be taking taking up all this stuff because of eBay's stupid decisions, as always. So. Pay attention to that. That's an option for you if you've got adult material. There is a comment down on there multiple times with the name of it. I'm not going to announce it. I'm not going to endorse it, but it's an option. I will be looking into it, I promise you. All of these moves are just scaring off people. I don't care if eBay is doing good right now. As I said so many times, the only reason in the world eBay is, is doing good now is because of a pandemic. I don't know that they're going to be able to keep it up. If they lose big sellers that have... Again, I'm number three, apparently, compared to what eBay says in some categories. I'm number one in a few categories by what they say. If they lose the top two, three, four, five people selling, that could be half of the category. If I'm looking for something as a collector, I'm going to go where there's more items of that collectability, of that collectible item. If it's not eBay, they're not going to go to eBay anymore. End of story. It, it, again, this is 100% this is total not understanding, not looking into item specifics in any way. How can you charge somebody more without telling them? How can you take them out of a category where gallery uh, views are, are free or and then put them in a category where they may be a dollar now? Again, these are, these are your, you're going to have to check all your invoices from now on. More time out of your pocket. Not only are you going to be spending hours and hours adding item specifics that are not going to garner you a single dime in the vintage and collectibles category anyway, but you're going to have to do all this other stuff. Again, I've ran a test. We had 8,400 item specifics that eBay recommended. I put in 4,200 of them. You can watch my videos. You can see I've shown both of those screenshots. So you can see without a doubt that we filled in 4,200. They do not go away. They are still there until you fill them in. Filled them in. The ones that I filled them in on, I got less sales from. So it, it, there's no, again, that could just be, you know, coincidence, but we're talking 4,200 listings compared to a baseline of 4,200 listings in the very same contingent categories. So you tell me, and that's over two months time frame. I, I'm very analytical. I want to see something. I gave them the benefit of the doubt and I spent almost $300 paying an employee to do that. $300 may not sound like a lot to some people, but every dime counts. I work very hard for every dime that comes into, into, into my life. Every dime I've had to earn. I work 12, 14 hours, most of the time six days a week, many times seven days of the week. I like what I do. I don't like dealing with eBay anymore at all, though. So again, at this point, I'm not telling anybody to leave eBay. That's on your own decision. But we are seriously seeking as many other avenues and venues as I can possibly imagine right now, even if they aren't quite as viable because I'm willing to wait until they go up. I'm willing to give up a little money to not have a headache every single day having to deal with something different. I've always rolled with the punches, as most people know. Some things they do are terrible decisions. Well, most things they do are terrible decisions. But I've always been able to get past them and keep on moving. This is this is hurting your 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 buyers. Your buyers aren't going to know where stuff's at. Your buyers aren't going to have any explanation how any of this works. 
uh, your, your saved searches that people may have, have saved for years, they're not going to know they need to go in there and change them. They're not going to have a clue. That's the whole point. If somebody's every, every day I look for certain items, I've saved searches. I'm just going to keep going back to my saved search. Why would I go anywhere else? So I go to my saved search. I don't know that those items aren't in that saved search anymore. None of this has been thought out. Not a single part of this has been thought out. They just decided they wanted the data, again, opinions. They wanted the data like, like Amazon has. But the bad part of it is I don't have to put any of these item specifics in Amazon, and I don't have any problems. I never hear from Amazon. I never, ever hear from Amazon. Other than, say, Richard Pryor's estate and once for a Mickey Mouse. And they didn't send me a notice. I just happened to check those. I wasn't warned. I wasn't threatened. They didn't take my items down like eBay does. And everybody says Amazon's the monster. Amazon has been far nicer to us, far more understanding of anything that happens than eBay has in the last three years. I'm not making this up. Take it as you wish again. But we are not trusting eBay with our funds anymore, with our with our livelihood. It's dropped down to the, you know, 47%, 46% now. Conceivably by the end of the year, it could be down to 35% of our business. As I pull off lower value items that aren't worth my time to fix and add in 14 recommended this, 11 recommended item specifics, it makes no sense. They're telling us we don't know how to run our own business. I know more about running and selling antiques than they do, by far, any day of the week, as do probably most of the people out here. I know I haven't touched the the the, the, the comment box here. Uh, again, I, I am I am I've wasted an entire day on this. Yeah, why should I waste my day on it? Why just go with the punches? I'll hear somebody else say that too. You're talking. I'm going to have to spend maybe a thousand bucks or more to to get this all corrected. Is a thousand bucks hit? Is that relevant is that important to you would a thousand bucks hurt your business it's not going to hurt my business it's not the point the point is the principle i'm a very principled person i don't like being lied to i don't like being given misleading information that's not really accurate there's no way that i can be in the top three of a category and not be included in the top hundred percent of people selling again i can show that's the that's what they're stating because i don't do free shipping how can i be in the top top couple percentage single digit numbers and not do free shipping and sell that much items and not be included in the hundred percent so again these are fictitious i don't buy any of those numbers all of them are telling you to put in this information or that information i wonder i have to wonder again opinion wise that they're doing this just to give us to get us to put that information in there is that a real sheet that's really there to help us or is that a way to market us to put in item specifics so that they can get the data so that they can market that data to people wanting to buy advertising i i personally feel that all the item specifics is tied to advertising potential like facebook does if you know how facebook does they you'll see posts or advertisements you'll be looking at something somebody will have something up there you'll be doing a normal search and then uh, you'll be on facebook a totally different area and you'll see advertisements posted to you for very specific things that you just looked at is that's my opinion on what ebay is trying to do they're trying to weasel this in and, and there's no solid communication between the people deciding on what to do and the coders that are being told to do it because they don't know i've seen my my item specifics are going up and down don't recommend them if they're going to change why on earth would you recommend anything that you're not even set on yeah you can change them in the future but you're talking days later or the same very same day a lot of the items I'm getting item specific recommendations or ones that will soon be required were not listed on that May notice for the update that are due June 15th, but yet they are still listed and they're required because they changed something else. Again, take it as you wish. Take it as you wish. But your money is at stake right now if you don't check your account and make sure they didn't move your items to a category that costs more or that does not give you free gallery images. That's a dollar extra for every listing you had used gallery images if they switched them out of a category that does not include gallery images for free. That's a dollar charge. There are other fees like that. I don't use most of eBay's upcharges or anything like that. The only one I use are the free ones, the only ones I've ever used. So there may be other ones that are free in certain categories. And if, again, they moved your item out of those categories without telling you, which they're not telling anybody, that's what's happening. Just, again, like my sheet music. They listed all of my sheet music now as like new. I've never listed anything as like new. I list every little detail. Even my condition box says there's details wrong with them. So again, my customers are now wondering why I've got that in there. 
I didn't put it in there. I had nothing to do with that. So that's very upsetting for customers to think that I'm doing something wrong. And that's what a lot of the comments on e-commerce bytes and a lot of these posts on eBay's message boards are saying that customers are assuming that the buyer or the seller is the one putting this bad information in there. It's, it has nothing to do with us. So again, if you sell something and eBay changed the condition box on it or it doesn't exist and they moved it somewhere else and you don't catch it when you mail that out, the buyer gets it. And well, that wasn't what I thought it was going to be. You could be totally floored with a return, negative feedback as well. So them just moving stuff around affects so much other stuff that they're not even thinking about. All I think they're thinking about is cha-ching, cha-ching as that money rolls in for the opportunity at this point to market very specifically towards you a size 4 shoe or a specific watch when you look and looking and you'll see ads for this, you'll see ads for that. Again, most of my recommendations are for things I've never looked at. have no interest in looking at at all. So I don't buy any of that stuff going on anymore. Again, it's, they're telling us it's because of Google. If you're just joining the conversation, rewind this video and you can see for yourself that I don't have anything not showing up on Google Shopping that are related to item specifics in any way, shape, or form. Everybody out there can go to your performance tab and right at the very top, you'll see listing quality report. Download that report. On that report, as I said and showed, it has a section where it shows all of the listings that were rejected by Google Shopping. Out of, out of 30,000 listings, only nine, and none of them are related to these awful, totally useless item specifics and vintage and collectibles categories. Now, I'm not saying that item specifics in general are bad. I'm saying to the level, the extent, and how they're moving around is totally inexcusable in any way, shape, or form in my opinion. I can see using them, which I do for like a shoe size. I only buy shoes off Amazon, truthfully, if I'm going to buy them offline. I don't trust eBay with shoes. I don't buy the expensive ones. I don't need to have them sent in anywhere. But I buy them off Amazon because I never have a hassle on returning. Usually I can check the vendors out just like I can on eBay, so I'm not really worried about that. No people have issues with Amazon, but money is tight whenever you're around, so you always got to make it sure so you're not spending money where you don't need to. You know, I got the money, but it's not the point. So, uh, again, everything that I keep hearing about not showing up and all this stuff is moot. It doesn't, it's not happening. If my totally created from scratch listings on a uh, private Shopify that I created don't have any item specifics, but yet they're still showing up on a Chrome search, uh, Google Shopping, or anywhere else that they show up, they're still showing up. I don't have to do any of that. So there's no correlation between Google Shopping and what eBay is stating. You can see it for yourself on your own listing quality report. It Again, this seems to be a money grab, in my opinion. Again, these are opinions. I'm allowed to have that. eBay will probably try and make some nasty remark or send me another comment about this. But this is your money. This is your money out of your pocket. So again, if, if you're unaware, your friends are selling stuff, you need to start checking categories to make sure they haven't moved your items. Like in comic books, they're moving into centralized categories, they're removing stuff, so things are floating. If you're not catching a lot of where they're moving stuff to, you may not get sales because of that. It's not gonna show up in searches if they move it out of the category you put it in. You might have titled it specifically for one category, but now it's in another category. We don't know any of what they're doing with this. And again, uh, there's, there's, oh God, I, I, I can't even go into how many Reddits there are, hundreds and hundreds. I gave up even looking at Reddits with all the complaints about item specifics that are totally unrelated, or they put them in a category that means nothing. They wondered why it wasn't selling. These are all types of different items. I don't, I, I'm not one to rant because the last time I ranted, I got tons of hate mail from across the board, but I honestly, sincerely feel that this is going to hurt a lot of people. Um... Yeah, there's some other folks talking about that too. Media mail too. You, they're, they've cut off media mail and stuff that's actually still media mail. So I guess they don't. They want you to go to other platforms just to ship now. And I've said I brought that up before. I, I was hit something with something that was fully media that they wouldn't allow. The option was gone. Mind you, they are collecting for media mail, but they won't let you ship it. So no matter what, you've, you're forced to either go somewhere else or to to ship it a more expensive way in some categories. I know the law and I know the rules on media mail. I follow them very specifically. No magazines and all that. Other. I don't ship comic books media. They always go first class. Seven ounces is what they weigh. So again, there's there's so many issues with what's going on. 
You, you may have that shipping issue. I don't know how many times I've had the issue with the media mail. A book is a book. It doesn't matter what's in it. A book. Any book can go media mail. Any book can go media mail. End of story. It's a book. That's what it's for. eBay's blocking them in categories that aren't so specifically narrowed. I, again, this, this makes completely no sense. They haven't talked to a single one of the people that are the number ones, number two, three, four, five, and selling in these categories. They didn't consult with anybody who knows what they're doing in those categories. They assumed because they run the categories that they know how to handle them, but they completely don't. No one in their right mind is going to be typing in PVC in a record category. No one's going to be typing in inlay in a record category. I mean, they're just useless. Not to mention the album name for a 45 that never had an album or a 78 album name. There is no album name on 90% of the 78s that we sell. It doesn't exist. They've got antiquated terms. They've got non-related terms and stamps, even in coins that don't relate to what people use nowadays. They don't relate to the books and the price guides. They don't relate to the catalogs or any of the software that people use to keep and track their inventory. You know, it, it's ridiculous. Listing-wise, is not going to be worth it for me to list anything under 20, 30 bucks almost at this point on eBay in several categories, including records. On Discogs, I don't even need to take a photo. I mean, come on. Amazon, two photos, a title, a rough condition, and my price, and I am done. And I can CSV file those up just as easily as I can on eBay. Well, probably easier, at least in the, the record category. I don't know what I'm missing here. They're trying to alienate people off the site. Are they trying to push them off? I know they keep saying that's not what they're trying to do. Every move they've made in the last year or so, other than, uh, well, managed payments isn't good for so many people. There's another story on e-commerce bites right now where they're holding $50,000 of someone's money saying there's nothing wrong. We're just doing a routine thing. They did that to me too. And I made a stink and I called straight out and Oh boy, I, I was irritated. I didn't I didn't need the money, it was the principal. I get a payout once a week. It's the principal. It's the principal that they're just randomly locking and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't I don't trust anything that, that they're doing anymore. I don't. Again, I'm I, I hold nobody accountable at, at uh, you know, help desk or any of the people that we talk to on the phone or that you converse with on any of the services or platforms. All those people are just doing what they're told. So don't ever take it out on the eBay reps or anything else like that. I like the idea now of the platform because again, the searches are totally broken. Cassini is a nightmare now. They've just totally wrecked it. I've got people, oh geez, I could just send you, I could fill up you know, a 24 hour video of stuff that people have sent me that's just crazy. I could do book after book after book of showing you the awful search results that show up. I've been trying to do a video for Bob, one of my, my longtime Patreons. I've talked to him for quite some time. I can't even really put together a video on searches because it's all over the place. You know, and I've looked at it from a couple different laptops and a PC tower. It's just all over the place. You know, some of them come up similar. Some of them are all over the place, depending on the keywords you're using. Some of the most relevant, you could use like every keyword in the title and it not show up, but you could use two different keywords and it shows up. You know, if you're looking for very something very specific, I don't see as even the item specifics are going to do it unless you're using those those constantly. Most people aren't going to use an item specific in a postcard section unless you're able to narrow it down by like a specific catalog number, but that doesn't exist in those categories. Uh, yeah, I, I know I haven't touched on here. I, I've just been, this. It, every time I look at this, it just gets worse and worse. It's just total lack of respect for any of us, total lack of transparency. It, it, for all I know, it could be illegal for them to be charging us more without telling us they're putting it in a different category. I am pretty sure that once they quote a price, they have to give you notice that they're changing the price of something. Because that would be false advertising, as far as I know. Because you listed it somewhere, and they just, they deemed they didn't want it in that category. They didn't, unless they're sending you an email notice, which I haven't had anybody tell me at all. They're caught off guard by all this. And again, these are folks that may not be thinking about the aspect of their monthly bill. So when your monthly bill comes in, are you going to remember to look at that? Are you going to remember to see, well, did I get charged for any gallery uh, views, gallery photo uh, presentations? That's an extra dollar, as I said. If you've got a thousand listings, that's a thousand. You could have some monster bill that you're going to have to argue with eBay. And if you don't have phone support, geez, how long, how, how many people are going to be backed up when the bills come out now? 
How, how big is the um, eBay for business on Facebook going to be backed up? How many emails are they going to be backed up? You know, here, here's, here's an example on, on eBay. I signed up for the Detroit Open or the event they had here. It was 20 bucks. I paid the 20 bucks. They said we'd get it back in a gift card. Well, I got the gift card in the mail because they canceled it. And the other day I went to use it. And you know what? The gift card was for only 10 bucks. They gypped me on the gift card for 10 bucks. If anybody, and then, then I, I emailed eBay for business and they wanted me to produce a screenshot from more than a year ago from their page for them posting that it was going to be a $20 fee and they would refund it. That's what they told me. So I can't even trust them on going to, I'll never go to an, or even apply for any eBay functions ever again. They, it, it, and again, I could care less about the 10 bucks. It's the principle. They couldn't even be legit on a $10 gift card, on a $20 gift card. They charged me for 20, you're gonna get it back. We canceled the event. I did get a shirt that I can't fit and I did get a mug that I'll never use and a cup or something, but that's what I got out of that. And I lost 10 bucks for wanting to go to the event and seeing what they had to say. I'll never do that again. Again, just for sheer principle. If you haven't hit the thumbs up, please hit the thumbs up. Please share this. Make sure everybody knows what's going on. Don't let your friends be caught off guard by fees that they didn't know about because eBay switched it in category and then it's now charging you for a different category. There's 439 people in house. Hit the thumbs up if you're enjoying the conversation. Again, this wasn't my, my intent. I had a video I just finished editing, but after somebody sent me another screenshot, I read another article, I, I couldn't put that one up. I felt this is the most important thing that everybody needs to know now. So uh, again, I'm sorry about the super chats. I did not call them out. I, I'm, I'm totally, this is, this is crazy. I'm going to have to seek backup sources to list everything now. I can't count on eBay to be safe, to be fair, to be honest, to be transparent with us anymore. You know, the CEO in charge, I have no faith since the day they picked him. Again, the guy who killed the nook, in my opinion, you can read it on Wall Street Journal yourself. Any of those posts, you'll see the exact same thing. They're going to insinuate that it was his fault over the nook. I would have never hired the guy. He's a Walmart guy. Walmart doesn't sell. I know people say Walmart sells adult material. All the other platforms that you're talking about that sell adult material sell them in a generic box with no imagery on them whatsoever. That's the difference. They're, they're generically boxed. Um, but that eliminates anything, even like uh, lingerie. If there's anything suggestive on the, the packaging, the label, you can't put it up there anymore. And it was made that way. They could have made it in a generic thing, but a lot of them aren't. So you've got merchandise. There's people who have a ton of merchandise. There's nothing, there's nothing immoral or wrong, in my opinion, about lingerie. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever, but a lot of people aren't going to be able to sell it for the sheer fact of the items on there. Again, if you didn't hear, go to e-commerce bytes, look for the eBay banning adult items. In the comments section, there's people, there's one person there stating he started an adults only site for anybody at all out there who wants to sell those items. So look it up yourself. I'm not going to endorse it. I haven't used it, but I did look. It's live and active now. So FYI, eBay is just going to give away millions of dollars by cutting those off. That's fine. I've, if, you know, there's other places to sell. Magazines can be sold in other spots too. I'm actually working with a couple of folks trying to get that done on another platform also. So everybody isn't like eBay. I know I haven't missed. I've missed a bunch. Um, hang on just a second here. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I'm so far down. I'm not even able to see all the all the super chats. I'm sorry. I do apologize. Linda Taylor, thank you very kindly for the five dollar super chat. Um, again, I'm sorry. I've just this, it's been one of those days. I've got a lot going on. I don't need to have to deal with with eBay all the time. I've said this before. 10,000 items on five different sites, 85, 95% of my time is all going to go to fixing and dealing with eBay every single time, every single time. My time, my aggravation is worth losing percentages of money by listing on eBay to just go somewhere without, well, else with a lot of my items. You, everybody out there knows I'm not one to say, pull your items off eBay. I'm not telling you to do that, but I am seriously, 100%, we're going in a different direction. We're going to try and see what we can accomplish without having to worry about keeping eBay at a 50% mark or whatever. It's already at 46, 47% of my income in the first place. Why? 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 Because of that. Because of these stupid, idiotic decisions that they never search out, they never experiment with, they never ask the people who sell the majority of the items. There's people like Mr. Magazine and, and Paper Going, and, and me even, where we're like number one in categories, and they're not even talking to us to see what's the most important thing your buyers want from your items. They're just coming up with something without figuring it out, without even investigating. I do my homework. 
I've done my homework. I use things that help me get my sales. I don't listen to eBay's recommendations anymore. I don't do any of that. eBay's recommendations are put your item specifics in, give away free shipping because 48% of the category sells because of free shipping. While 52% is more than 48%, I'm going to and charge the shipping so I'm not losing any extra money. I'm not going to figure it into the price like a lot of people say, just figure it into the price. You know, if you figure it into the price, you're, you're losing some money because people only pay so much for the item. They keep, they keep shipping separately. That's what people are missing on it. It's different with clothing. Everybody wants clothing or NOS or games and stuff at a set price. When people are looking at collectibles, it does not work that way. Shipping has always been extra. Going back to the mail order days, when I was a kid buying from My Lie Comics and all those ones, shipping was always different. Always. And that's the people that are still collecting these items as well as new people. So that's all a misconception in my book in collectibles. The only reason people are selling and putting shipping or free shipping and collectibles and stuff is because eBay keeps telling them to do that. All it's doing is costing you a couple dollars every time you do that. That's it. You know, so that, that's my take on that. Pat D's, thank you very kindly as well for the $5 super chat. Yeah, eBay is definitely difficult. I've had, I don't do phones at all on eBay. I only accept offers occasionally. I've had so many people tell me you can't list in many different categories on the platform. And I'm going to say this again, and I say it every time. The application on the phone is a limited access application, a limited feature. It does not have all the features, and it never will as far as I can see. It's always been that way. That's the one reason I will never use the phone for anything on eBay other than accepting. It's just, just the way it is. I'm, I'm not a, a fan on phones in general, honestly. Yeah, eBay's taken 25 years to just get worse and worse day by day, year by year in these last few years. When Meg was there, it was great. That's all I can say. <laughs> so many people had completed listings relisted. I saw that, and I've been getting messages from that constantly and constantly and constantly. It depends on how you have it set up because auto relist automatically relists items. If you're talking about uh, auctions, it should never relist stuff like that. Yeah, there's other folks saying they've had items change, the prices change, and all sorts of different things, too. I would not doubt it. C.T. Uh, Coburn, thank you as well for the $5 super chat. Very, very kind. Comic is a big card site that essentially crashed. Now, I don't know that one. Now, I'm, I've been talking to Hip Comics. If you want Comic site, uh, Hip Comics, I will, the way it looks, have some free months to offer folks. Um, no strings attached, and you can uh, uh, direct import your your items. I should have something in my mailbox right this very second from them. Um, I actually have their CEO on here. I'm not getting promoted to do that either, so this is just going to be somebody else. I want you to hear somebody who really knows his stuff and who is a collector. The CEO of HIP is a collector. He, he's got an IT degree. It's not some guy that was hired out of Harvard who just wants to make $10 million a year. This is a guy who started off from scratch. He's invested in it. He's been working at it for years. I have to respect him. He knew what he was talking about. He answered my questions. He gave me financial numbers. This guy was totally straight with me, and I looked up most of the information and fully believe that he is totally being honest with me. And you guys know I'm very skeptical on anything. So there are other options. There are other opportunities. Everybody says we need to band together and stuff. There's no way we are going to be able to create a site that's that's going to get there because even the sites that have been around for five and six years still ain't to the point to fill it in. But if a lot of people go to the same sites, like hip with your comics or stuff like that because the comics is just crazy, you are going to be able to give some sway to eBay because the majority of the business may float to another site. That's what happened with Amazon. That's why Amazon's there. eBay has lost the market share because of stupid moves like this. If the comic sellers who have 10, 20,000 comic books out there have to manually go in and change every single listing one at a time, how many of them do you think is going to be wanting to stay on eBay? Huh? On Amazon, on hip comics, I just take a picture of the comic and it fills everything else in for me. How's that? Again, if you, you're interested in that, I should have some free links. So just hang on. I will do an announcement. I'll have some videos out. Um, Patreon, you'll see them first as well. So again, there are other options out there. And I'm fully invested in it taking. I'm not pulling that stuff off eBay, but 
I'm not going to be listing the cheaper items because it's not worth my time to two years down the road to have to come back in there and spend four weeks adjusting stuff because eBay decided to change it once again. And I'm waiting on all the item specifics to the last minute again because they keep changing. Those numbers have been going up and down, up and down, up and down, meaning that they don't have a clue. You know, and I had somebody trying to stick up from a lot of the comments I'm thinking that are talking about Google and stuff are from people who work at eBay, trying to put a spin on some of the comments on there and negate some of the folks who are commenting on my videos. Because I had a flood of them all saying basically the same thing with different names, all talking about how it's Google and Google and Google and Google, trying to blame it on Google and not. But again, go to your own listing quality report and see how many of your listings aren't showing up in Google Shopping. You will be surprised. I don't buy any of that again, as I said. Shopify, you create your own, own, own item specifics. You don't have to have any if you don't want, and they all show up just fine. The only one who would be would be the gatekeeper would be eBay requiring those because they're the ones who are allowing and sharing that information on Google. It's not Google saying, hey, you've got to have the inlay type on a record. I don't see Google asking for any of that. Google has AI. AI. AI runs, runs Google, if you didn't know that, and, and has since... Uh, 2017. Dom, Primetime Treasure, uh, I think I saw him in the house. He had sent me something on a video that had no tags on YouTube. Well, I looked into that. Tags are useless on YouTube now. Of course, nobody tells you that, but tags are useless because of AI. So then I delved into the whole uh, aspect on eBay and the statement saying it's to help you show up outside the site. The number one place you would show up on is Google. And from what I see, they use AI and they don't even care what we type in the tags and specifics anymore at all because they're able to actually look at the photo, the title, and distinguish it from there. So anybody telling me that at this point, I got to assume must be someone from eBay trying to spin it because I had a ton of them literally it was like a propaganda or a a uh, promotional statement or something basically so i almost got to wonder if ebay put a, again opinions put a whole bunch of comments down i didn't post any of them i didn't post any of them just like uh the spamming of buy uh bitcoins now i, I got like 72 of those on one video so again I, who knows again a lot of this is my opinion but you can see the same information that i'm showing you and come up with your own opinion and i bet you it'll be the same one i have you know eBay's, eBay's showed us that they're not concerned about mom and pa sellers at all. People say, well, adult material, I don't like it, I don't like it. Well, just because you don't like it, it's still legal. It's a business. They're not hurting anybody. Most of the people who are making these comments are telling me they didn't even know eBay sold it in the first place. So, you know, they're hurting people that I personally know that, that feed their entire family, kids. We're talking kids. Their kids don't know what their parents do, so no one can come in and say their kids, kids are more. None of it's even done in their house. But the point is, now they don't know what to do, and everybody says, well, you can do it anywhere. The, the most safest place for anybody to sell this material had been on eBay. The cheapest place for anybody to buy this material had been on eBay. So you're, you're, you're putting it all, everybody off to the sharks and wolves. You're, you're putting it off to, to people that may want you know, a, a certain lingerie item that's nothing wrong with it that now can't get it because of a packaging material or will have to shyly go into a, a local store, which they, that's the reason they don't want to do it. That's the reason it was better. It was safer. There's a lot of aspects. But the, the, the aspect that's the worst part is people I know don't know how they're going to feed their kids after June 15th. Nobody, eBay doesn't care. They're, they're making so much money. I also saw on, on there that eBay got a, I don't know if this is true, but I promise you I'll be looking into it, that eBay got a share of Aiden's stock for doing this. And that's why they don't care, because not only are they getting all the money, but they've got stock. And I, I don't know if that's true, but I promise you I'll be looking into that, because that would almost, that would be, that's deceiving and by the way they've represented it in my book some of what they've said in the past of course we know they do that all the time just like yeah you'll be able to sell this you'll be able to sell that i know i don't even know what time i started i know i've been ranting i don't mean to just be ranting but um let me slide down again auction monkey well thank you very kindly as well for the five dollar super chat I don't like ranting at all. I don't like getting my blood up. I'm a very calm, cool, mellow person 99.9% .9 of the time. But man, I, I just, I, I once again have to change my whole business structure to make sure that majority of my eggs are not in eBay on these vintage items. I just, I can't trust them. I can't trust them that I'm not going to be forced. It, it, let's say there's you've got 50,000 items up that took you eight years to get up and it's just you and i know there's people out there watching this right now because i just saw something and that's why we're bringing this topic up here 
There's somebody watching this right now who is around 50,000 items up that took him eight, nine years himself to get up. And he in no way could go ahead and go back in there and alter 50,000 listings by June, whatever date, July 12th, whatever date they're stating it is. doesn't matter. Two months, that's a long time. That means he ain't going to be listing. He's not going to be able to source. You're talking 50,000 listings in the categories that they're requiring him to change in. Come on, I got 30,000 just on the store I'm sharing with you. Uh, again, there's there's just no, no rhyme or reason to it. I, I don't know where to go with this other than to say I don't trust them anymore. There was a uh, British uh, two uh, resellers from England. I don't remember their name. It's just two something and and something. It's two names. eBay held up their money. And from that point on, they, I, I saw somebody showed me and shared me the, the timestamp with that one. They said they're going to be looking elsewhere, not putting their eggs in eBay only. There's more and more of these longtime sellers. If I remember right, maybe it's Andrea, Nick or something. I don't watch hardly any other channel. Somebody shared this with me. Um, but they had literally stated that it's a couple and I like the couple ones just because me and my wife do it. Nothing against single people doing it. I don't want that to sound bad, but I'm a big family person as anybody would know. Um, but again, they were worried. They just locked up their money out of nowhere for no reason, no explanation. And just like the $50,000 that they're holding and it's on that e-commerce one there, um, it's the same basic principle. I'm, I was going to share some of those with you, but just go and you can read all that stuff on there um, as well. It's just, just gotten beyond the point of, of wanting to deal with it. I don't care if they stop it at this point as well. Next year, somebody else could take over when this guy flops and the sales go back down after the pandemic's done and they could do some other crazy thing. I know any site could do that, but I'm I'm leveraging and I'm investigating and investing in sites, um, even if it's like uh, sites that are smaller, you know? Like Hip Platform, I, I I saw stuff on that that site pretty much every day of the week these days. It's the only other site other than Etsy or Amazon that that happens. It's not a big site. It's specially it's niches, but there's other platforms out that out there like that too. Again, I, I can't trust them. There's no transparency. They're they're costing people money. Again, we'll go over this one more time and I'll end it from there. As I don't want to just rant and rave, but for those who just hit on eBay is changing items from one category to another. Go to e-commerce bytes, read some of the articles there. I promise you, you'll be shocked at some of what you see on there. So basically, if you listed your item in one category, one specific category, and you based your price on the final value fees, eBay is moving stuff from one category to another. That other category, those fees could be different. So the price that you dictated you wanted your item may not be relevant and you may be giving something away. On top of that, the gallery uh, view option is free in most all of collectibles. If they move those items to, say, an antique section, it is a dollar fee in other categories. So you could be hit with those dollar fees on any item they happen to move possibly as well. So all of that's going to hit. You're all going to have to go in and check your invoices constantly going forward to make sure that there aren't any of these things going on. Now, I check mine anyway because I find errors on probably every third invoice, probably on average. Sometimes it's only 20 bucks. Sometimes it's five or ten. Sometimes it's been way more than that. I've asked for explanations why they've double billed me for things and stuff like that. Never heard another word back, of course. They did fix the issue, but it, it's just the point that I can't trust the bills. I can't trust that even while I'm listing that I'm not going to get the error, that it won't allow me to list and I'll have to reload the page. I can't trust that I'm printing a label and it's not going to come up and tell me to retry every label on the bulk shipping page because none of them imported into their own bulk shipping options correctly. Like if you use eBay standard delivery, international delivery, your items don't even show up on the master scan sheet. So if you've got 15 items going out, your mail carrier is now going to have to scan 15 individual items to match that. Again, it's all through their system. There's no logicness to, to understanding why they can't embed them all together. It works like that on every other platform. They spent $5.1 billion buying back their own stock but we're dealing with issues every, again, 38 days I tested and I wrote down every time someone here had an error. Every one of those 38 days we had a multi, well, there might have been one day when we didn't list much where we only had one or two errors, but almost every other one it was like half a dozen or more. Every single day for the last 38 days. You want to know how many times I had an error on Amazon listing? In the last year, zero. How many times on HIP I had an issue? Zero. Uh, Etsy, zero. Um, Jeez, anywhere else I go, it's zero. 
It's zero on all the other platforms I deal with, but eBay. And eBay, I spend the majority of my time dealing with this stuff day in and day out. And everybody says, well, you're just dogging anybody. You're going to make them look bad. They're making themselves look bad. I can't hold my tongue. I'm sorry. This is costing people out their money. And again, not just from you getting more fees from them switching it. All of the category specific or, or buyers that are watching uh, categories that they send them an email if they remove your item from a category that a buyer was hoping your item would show up in and it's now in a different category they're not even going to see the items that you're selling in those categories i've had people point out one specifically the chances are their items weren't being sold there's been and you can read my post when i talk i have another post another video about this a couple days ago there's a bunch of comments down there where they stated uh, they moved like plushes to some screwy like wall art category and none of their stuff was selling overnight. They had a bunch of things. But, you know, now that they moved them, they started to move them back to the category they originally and they were selling. So eBay hurt people's sales when they're moving stuff out of categories because eBay, in many cases, when you, like, if I'm looking for a plush, it's not going to show you wall art category. It's going to show you a centered in, narrowed down, plush only category most of the time. So again, the, the, the searches are screwed up. Buyers can't find what they're looking for. eBay's changed a ton of my conditions. So now I've got buyers asking, well, this isn't like new. I never put like new in any of my items. So now I've got to go in manually and figure out which ones they've done that to. So I don't get a negative feedback because eBay decided that my condition statements needed to be updated to their specific uh, listed condition statements. Again, this is just just insane it's affecting every aspect of my business where at this point as i said we are seriously going out and expanding to other places with the, the newer merchandise that comes on and we will be probably pulling probably maybe ten thousand listings for all i know at, at some point prior to the end of the year because again it's not going to be worth selling them if i've got to spend three minutes a piece on every single one of my listings to go back in and figure out what the heck they are wanting me to fill in item specifics that are required that don't relate in any way shape or form to stuff and that's across the board I, i've never heard so many comments and complaints in my life uh, across the board on all of this stuff day in and day out my box is flooded with people complaining and showing me examples of item specifics every day every hour of the day something is coming in showing me the insanity what's happened to this person what's happened to that person i have no way to respond to pretty much all of them because it's just flooded with stuff like that i don't trust them i don't buy it the reddit boards are flooded Again, I, I personally feel this is just a way for them to get this information, just like Amazon does, and use it to market advertising to us specifically from off-platform companies, where eBay will get a percentage of those. That's, again, why everybody's lowered their affiliate links down, things like that as well, I think, too. It's all a ploy, in my opinion. Again, I they'll probably go after me, but at this point, you know... They want to shut me down it's not going to kill my business that's all i can say this is not right they shouldn't be screwing over every seller on the platform by doing stuff like this to them the, the time alone this is a retroactive penalty for me having more listings on the platform that's all it is mr magazine a thousand or a hundred thousand listings on there if he has to go in and change a hundred thousand listings that's a penalty for me having more items on the site why would i stick with somebody with that many with that type of mentality and if they didn't think that that would hurt people with that many listings, they're crazy. They didn't think about anything when they rolled this out. Just like pretty much every one of these things they do. They never think of the consequences. Again, my opinion of what they're doing. You can see it yourself. You come to your own conclusions. However you want to feel about that, it's going to affect possibly you at some point. Whether it is now or not, once they hit the categories you were in, you're going to have the same ordeal, the same problems. Maybe they'll be worse. Maybe they'll be better. Who knows? But I have no faith in going forward that I can trust to keep even 46% of my business going through eBay. I'm going to have to definitely seek major alternatives that, that can be safe, that I can control far better than that. You know, I, I don't know any other way around this because this is this is a constant issue, especially in the last three years. I, I again, th there had to be another motive for for a lot of the stuff they're doing, and obviously, I'm thinking again, all of the stuff they're answering and all the questions are again all like uh, public relations comments. They can't answer in a, in a normal tone because everything is scripted that they read. So any of those like the message I showed you from the eBay chat community board. That looked scripted. 
I don't care what they're what they're saying. That was a marketing statement. Nothing more. It didn't it didn't explain the answers to anybody's questions, and most all of them don't like that. Again, that's my opinion. But I, I'm I'm well educated. Very well educated. I've been in the business industry. I worked for Corporate America as a regional. I handled $11.1 million. I know how stuff works. I'm not an idiot. I can see the writing on the wall, you know? Either that or they're going to sell the company, which I wouldn't have thought ever before, but something's going on that they are they're, they don't care about a lot of the stuff that's going on. They don't care what they do to the collectibles field, it seems, because they're going to be turning off buyers. They're Right now, they're probably already doing that. When people don't know the condition, why is it say this? Why is it say that? I'm not the only one who's seen those condition things. I've had many other people tell me the exact same thing. They're selling in the same categories. I've got emails from people to back that up right now. Pretty much everything I've said, people have sent me something on, or I've got something on my phone that backs those statements up. As do if you go to e-commerce bytes, you'll see people making the same statements that I've just made as well, as well as article after article talking about that eBay's message boards are filled with them. So I'm going to end it there on the rant, but you need to let everybody know that they need to start checking where their items went to make sure they weren't switched, to make sure that the category charges are, are the same or you're eliminating them. You could go from like guitars with a 5 or 6% and maybe they didn't think it was a guitar and they put it in electronics and now it's double that, 12%. That's a big difference. It only takes one person to buy some high dollar item in your store at a different percentage for you to lose 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks or more. So again, that is not right. I, I, I don't even know if that's legal. And, and normally I would never suggest that there could be some legality to it, but charging something for something that they were told, I can see them getting away with the gallery options because they say that in some categories, but when they're putting you in a category that now charges you or a category that costs more, they're not telling you. That is charging you above and beyond what you were quoted on a sheet that still probably says that on there. It's not your doing that it is now in another category. It is eBay's doing. So anyway, I'm going to let it go at that. I don't mean to be ranting, but this was too important to let it sit there and slide because I don't know how many people this can affect, but it's going to affect a heck of a lot. It's already affected most people I know, many people in such a negative way. Many people, it's going to affect their livelihood, how they feed their kids, how they feed their family and put a roof over their head, how they pay their car payments, their house payments, their rental notes, anything like that. And that's what bothers me. It's the principle. It's the principle. And even if it didn't hurt me, I'm still bothered by the principle. But it is hurting me. So again, I have a, a right to be bothered. I have a right to be upset that they are doing stuff like this and forcing us to do things like this. And as you know, just because they're not requiring it now doesn't mean that you're not going to be required to. If they're doing this to these categories, it's going to be the whole platform. They're not just going to switch over random categories. They're going to want the data from every category in the platform. So the whole platform is the same. So all their reports can integrate into each other. So you're not safe. No one's going to be safe. Maybe tomorrow they'll decide that car parts would be a problem. They're saying they want to clean up the internet. They want to clean it up is what I was told. So, you know, they, they, they shut down a completely walled off section of their site, which no one can get to unless they did many steps, including an age verification. And, you know, so if they want to do the same thing to cars, they can do that. If, if Nike wants to come in and ban anybody from selling shoes without a permit from them, they can do that too. You know, you're going to have to be very careful going forward to, to realize who we're, who we're working with as our, our, our listing and auction provider, which is eBay. Do, we, do you trust them? Do you think of it yourself? You decide on yourself. I'm not going to tell you what, what to do, but you read enough and come up with your own conclusions is what I would say. I'm not rushing to get off the platform, but I sure as heck at this point, I'm rushing to get viable means going elsewhere. So if something happens, they're sold or they make the next terrible round. Again, they're already hinting at some other major move coming on. Read the articles on e-commerce bytes again. And there was a major comment from one of the boards. It's in one of Ina's, Ina's uh, stories. Literally, it states that uh, we got this coming ahead down the line. Well, they were making some big thing like this new rollout's going to help us, and it's not helping us at all. So if they got something major coming down the line, 10 to 1 says it'll probably be the fall one done in fourth quarter, and it'll be some major one that's going to affect us even worse again. Again, opinions, but that's usually what happens. So I'm going to let it go at that. We got almost 500 in house. Hopefully, this word gets out there. I don't see any other way around it. I don't think they could even go back and fix a lot of these item specifics, even if they wanted to at this point. 
you know, it might make it so you'd have to go and re-put different ones in or the old one back in if they even did fix it. So it's in the middle of a, a nightmare process, in my opinion, and it doesn't bode well for the buyer because, again, their searches won't show up. Your items might be different. Pricing's different for you because of final value fee differences or any of that other stuff. So anyway, I'm going to end it there. I don't need to rant anymore. I do apologize for the rant, but I think this is important enough information that everybody should have known it immediately as quick as possible so you can check for yourself to make sure you're not getting screwed by being forcing uh, having your items forced into a different category that may cost more. So anyway, I let you go. Pass the word. Make sure everybody knows to be aware of these issues.